Hi guys, Dave here, co-founder at E3D Online, and I'm going to walk you through step by step how to install a high flow Obsidian hot end onto a Bamboo X1 Carbon. Okay, so I've made sure that the power is disconnected, and I've now moved the carriage so that it's about in the middle. Um, I've also removed the top glass section because it just makes life a lot easier. Next thing we need to do is remove the three connectors that you'll see here that, that have wires that run down to the hot end. Well, one of them, the bottom one, is the temperature sensor. You've then got a fan and a heating uh, cable as well. If you've never done any kind of electronics in the past, fear not. These are just small Molex connectors. They, are, they do come out. Um, they might just take a bit of wiggling uh, when you're pulling them out. Um, one thing to definitely remember is never ever pull cables by the actual cable. Always pull them out by the connector itself. The last thing you want to do is pull the, pull the wire from the inside out of the actual connector itself. So may require a bit of a finger, fingernail to pull these out. They will come out with a bit of wiggling and finesse. Next thing we need to do is unscrew the actual hot end assembly itself using a 2mm hex key. Once we've got those two out, we then need to remove these uh, three cables. They are being retained by this behind this small clip here. You just need to gently pull them out from behind the clip. Now that we've got our cables out from behind the retaining clip and our two screws completely removed, we can now remove the hot end itself. This is done in a downward motion. If you give it a bit of a wiggle down, it will drop out like that. Okay, so we've now removed our hot end from our printer, but first thing we're gonna do is remove the fan. It's done with these two bottom screws down here. Next, we need to make sure that we are removing carefully the temperature sensor and the heating element. The way that we do that is by removing the sock. Just pull that off. And then we're gonna remove this retaining clip here. Pull this slowly and gently downwards. Give it a bit of a wiggle if needs be. Okay, so we've now removed that. I'm gonna pop this little retaining clip. Note that it's got two raised areas on either side. It's not completely square, so it's got a uh, it's got a slight raised area on one side here and same on the other side here. Okay, so we're just gonna keep an eye on those. We'll come back to that in a moment. Once we've done that, we can now carefully remove the heating element, pop that over to one side, and we can now carefully remove the thermistor or temperature sensor. And we'll pop that over to one side as well. We've now got our old hot end sat here, nozzle assembly. We can keep this uh, for future times. This isn't damaged, so I'm just gonna keep this to one side. Okay, now that we've successfully removed all of the components from the original hot end, we can now start to assemble the E3D High Flow Obsidian one. So, first of all, we need to make sure that we've got plenty of heatsink compound on the heating element inside the kit that you'll be supplied by E3D. You will find some heatsink compound from bamboo directly. We need to make sure that we're using plenty of heat sink compound when we do this to make sure that the temperature from both the thermistor, which I'll show you in a moment, and the heating element is transferred correctly. So first of all, we're gonna put a bit of heat sink compound in the little hole for the temperature sensor and gently slide that into the little hole. making sure that the cables run up this little rebate inside the heatsink. Next, we're gonna make sure that there's plenty of heatsink compound on the area where the heating element contacts the heater block. Perfect. Make sure that we've got plenty on the underside of the heater as well and then we just need to make sure that the two mate correctly.
like suchly. Now what we've got to do is put the retaining clip back onto the hot end itself. Where I mentioned earlier that there are two raised areas on the retaining clip, both sides. We just need to make sure that those line up with the temperature sensor. So raised clip, raised part of the retaining clip there is lining up with the temperature sensor on that side and we just gently slide that back over the whole assembly. There we go. This is all now assembled, perfect. We just need to put the sock and the fan back on, but before I do that, because I've got GAC everywhere, I'm just going to use some blue roll. Gotta love blue roll. And clean off any excess heat, uh, heat compound from around the sides there. Okay, now we just simply reinstall the sock. Sliding that back up, making sure that none of the sock protrudes beyond the top of the nozzle itself and then it's seated nicely above the heated block itself. Perfect. Now we can go on and reinstall the fan, making sure that the, the wires are uppermost. assembled Obsidian High Flow Hot End using the original electronics from the bamboo itself. Now that we've successfully reinstalled our hot end, it's time to pop the cables back in. So I'm just going to start with the fan and I'm going to make sure that the fan cable is nicely housed behind this retention clip, the temperature sensor and then the heating element. And then it now comes the medium fiddly bit of trying to get all of the connectors back in. It's not as hard as you think. You'll feel the thermistor go in with a click. The fan, it, ha it does have polarity, so it does have a right way and a wrong way. Um, but the way that the Molex connectors are made, or the connectors are made, it's almost impossible to put it in the wrong way. Once it's in, just give it a bit of a push. You'll feel it go home on that and then finally the heating element as well. Click, done. And that is the fiddliness completed. And then we're just gonna pop our, make sure the wires are all tucked away, pop our housing back on again. And we are complete, well done. Don't forget that this was the E3D Bamboo Lab metal only hot end upgrade guide. Uh, if you would like to see the fully assembled upgrade guide, then check out our YouTube channel.